And for more, I'm joined by Ambassador John Bolton, who served as U.S. National Security Advisor during the Trump administration and was the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. under President George W. Bush. John, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Glad to be with you. So fighting from both sides has resumed tonight. Hamas is now claiming to have hit Tel Aviv with a barrage of missiles today. Israel also continuing its offensive in Gaza. How do you see the conflict evolving in the days to come? Well, I think the Israelis have demonstrated they mean what they say when their objective is to eliminate Hamas as a political and military threat to Israel. I think it's going to be very difficult ahead with the uh, amazing tunnel structure that Hamas has done throughout Gaza, obviously the defensive preparations that, that they've made uh, above ground and in the tunnel system. And then also in trying to see what other uh, terror surrogate groups that are supplied and directed by Iran do, particularly Hezbollah operating out of Lebanon and Syria. So I think uh, as, as uh, difficult and dangerous as the first phase of combat was, this is going to be even more so, and, and uh, th this is the place where we would see, I think, uh, the, the larger Iranian uh, Hamas strategy. VP Kamala Harris said today that under no circumstance would the U.S. permit forced relocations of Palestinians in Gaza. And meanwhile, Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying that Israel will not halt its war with Hamas until its goal is achieved. Um, how do you see this war ultimately playing out at this point? Well, I'm not sure what the vice president really was focused on. If it's in the near term, Israel has done, again, what the United States uh, asked it to do, which is notify civilians in Gaza to move out of areas that may come under military uh, attack. And that's, that's the right thing to do. We asked for it, and the Israelis are doing it. So I hope she, that's not what she's complaining about. But I think the long-term issue here has to be, what is the future for the people of Gaza? And, in fact, uh, Gaza for uh, five decades now has been essentially a large refugee camp. It's not sustainable. It's not a viable economy. There's no real economic activity there. There wasn't before October the 7th, uh, and there won't be after it. For the good of the people uh, uh, living in Gaza today, since they can't go back to uh, where they fled, and many of them have been in Gaza as hereditary refugees, the best thing to do across the Middle East is to find ways to resettle them. That's not forcible displacement. That is standard international refugee doctrine. If you can't go back to your place of origin, uh, the international community finds ways to resettle you. And for the people to become part of a real functioning economy to give their families, their children, a vision of the future, I think that's best uh, for the Palestinian residents of Gaza. You know, Israel, we know, is bringing its negotiation team back from Qatar. Uh, negotiations have stalled. How bleak is the outlook at this point for the more than 100 hostages who are still being held by Hamas? Well, I think they're obviously in danger, and Hamas is a brutal, barbaric uh, outfit that could easily uh, execute them at, at its whim. But, but I think it's also interesting that uh, Hamas used the hostages as human bargaining chips to get time that it used to bolster its defenses. Uh, and, and the perfectly blunt uh, explanation here is that dead hostages don't benefit Hamas. So there's no doubt the, 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 those who were kidnapped on October 7th won't be safe until they're back with their families in Israel. But it's not immediately apparent to me that they're in more danger now than they were in the first six weeks of the war. I appreciate that. And we know U.S. troops are also under fire in the Middle East, more than 74 attacks since October 17th. And we know the Pentagon has moved U.S. forces into the region. Do you envision a scenario where the president would actually send troops into Israel? I don't, I don't see a scenario where they'd be in Israel, although I am sure, and I think it's advisable, that we've got senior military officials there trying to help Israel out, and certainly there's uh, intense uh, intelligence coordination. Uh, I think it's important, though, to, to underline the, the, the fact that you just raised of, of, of vulnerable Americans in our military facilities and our diplomatic facilities around the region. Uh, in Iraq in particular, the Shia militia groups, which j just like Hamas and Hezbollah are armed, equipped, trained and financed and directed by Iran, uh, have been attacking uh, our, our folks and, and the administration has not responded effectively. Uh, Iran is not paying a cost for this. And I'm very worried that at some point one of these attacks 
uh, by, a, by a militia group or by a terrorist organization, it's going to cause substantial casualties, and that will force the administration's hand. I think they need to tell Iran unmistakably, tell your surrogate terrorist groups uh, we will not accept any more attacks on Americans. Okay, and lastly, News Nation is hosting the next GOP presidential debate this coming Wednesday. We know you served in former President Trump's cabinet. Who is your pick for the 2024 GOP nominee, and what do voters need to know about these candidates? Well, I, I haven't picked anybody yet. I still think there are, I, although I'm against the renomination of President Trump, I think we've got some strong candidates. I think this debate is going to be important. Uh, and what I think is important in the debate for them to do is to take the case against Donald Trump and make the arguments why he's not fit to get the nomination again. You know, we're within uh, two months of the Iowa caucus and New Hampshire primary. Uh, Trump may be way ahead in the polls, but this is not over yet. And so I think the other candidates need to explain uh, not to criticize each other. That's that's uh, that is diverting their attention. They need to be talking about why they're better suited than the front runner. Ambassador John Bolton, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.